So you're ready to move off of those big, heavy, bloated desktop environments and you're ready to take the plunge. You want to start going window manager only. But maybe you're not ready to go tiling window manager just yet. Well, you know, one of my favorite standalone window managers of all time is a floating window manager called Openbox. So today, I thought I would show you guys how to set up Openbox on Linux Mint because maybe you're currently on Linux Mint and you're running Linux Mint Cinnamon and you're just not happy with the performance or maybe the function of the Cinnamon desktop environment. You're looking for something a little more light, fast, minimal, customized. I think you guys will be impressed. If you've never taken a look at Openbox, I'm going to run through installing Openbox on Linux Mint here on a virtual machine, but you guys can follow along with me on your physical machines. You won't do any damage at all to your actual Linux Mint installation by following along with me because if you don't like Openbox after we install it, you can always just go back and uninstall it. It actually won't touch whatever desktop environment you're currently running. So if you're running Cinnamon or XFCE or Mate, they will still be on the system for you to log into, but you'll have this extra session that you can play with, this extra Openbox session. So let me switch to this VM here. This is a VM of Linux Mint Cinnamon. And I'm going to pull up a terminal, so I suggest you guys do the same. And let me see if I can zoom in here. And the first thing we want to do, of course, is do some installations of some software. So I'm going to do a sudo apt install and then open box, of course, for the window manager. We also need obconf. We're also going to need something to change our GTK themes. So LX appearance is typically the program I use for that with Openbox. We're going to need some kind of panel or dock for me. I like using Tint2 for my panel. It's all one word, Tint2. I know when I blew up the font, it looks like it's two separate words, but it's Tint and then the number two after that. Also, we're going to need a compositor because Openbox does not have compositing built into it. So we're going to need Compton or Pycom, depending on how it's named in the Debian slash Ubuntu slash Linux Mint repositories. I think it's still called Compton, though. On Arch, it would be called Pycom. And really, I could just go with this here because most of the other programs, I mean, text editors and web browsers and office suites and things like that, are all the programs that are already installed in Linux Mint Cinnamon, right? I just need the window manager, open box, and some open box specific utilities like obconf and of course the tent2 panel and of course the compositor but one other thing i do want i want a run prompt a run command prompt such as dmenu or rofi for purposes of this video i'll install rofi but if you prefer dmenu or maybe something else like U launcher or gnome pi or whatever you know all those fancy launchers are but it's nice to have a run launcher on your system so I'm just going to hit enter and go with those programs there. And it should just take a few seconds to install these. Nothing is too big as far as these programs. Uh, they were all very small, minimal kinds of programs. And now that that is installed, I'm going to quit out of that terminal. And let's go ahead and log out of Linux Mint here. Oh, I'm going to choose log out here and go back to the login manager. And if I go to this symbol here, I can now change the desktop environment or window manager we're in. By default, of course, we were in Cinnamon. I also had installed i3 for a previous video I did uh, a while back. But here is our new open box session. So choose open box and then, of course, enter your password and log in. And by default, this is what open box looks like. It's a black screen, right? A black screen. It doesn't draw a wallpaper by default. We should have installed something to set a wallpaper. I didn't think about that. We'll fix that. Uh, all you have by default out of the box with open box. If I right click on the desktop, you do get this right click menu. And I don't know if it's actually populated with stuff we already have. It looks like it is. This looks like the actual stuff that is installed on Linux Mint. So that's great. So on some distributions, though, this right-click menu will only have just a handful of applications, and those applications are hard-coded as far as in the menu. So you may not actually have those programs installed, but this actually looks like our true applications menu because I think we have all of this stuff installed. For example, if I wanted to go down to utilities, let me find a terminal because I need a terminal. And 
maybe it's in the system menu. Yeah, there it is, terminal. And I am going to make that full screen. The first thing I want to do is run a xrander command here. XR and R. This is just for virtual box here. You guys aren't doing this on physical equipment will not have to do this, but I want to pick a better screen resolution here because this resolution when we logged into open box was really small. So let's get back to a, a more standard resolution. So this is open box by default. It's just the black screen. Thankfully, we do have the right click menu that is populated with some stuff. So hopefully you can get a terminal emulator up and running if you need to install software or launch programs. If I wanted to right now, I could do tent2 space and then an ampersign and see if our tent2 panel runs and it does. This is the tent2 panel down here at the bottom of the screen. Now the panel is black by default, which matches the black background. It's kind of hard to tell there's a panel there until we set a wallpaper. And when I close the terminal, the tent two panel disappeared, but we're gonna fix all that here in a second. Let me go and choose terminal emulator here to open the terminal again. And let's see if I can zoom in again here. Yeah. So we need to do another sudo apt install. And then we need to install something to draw wallpaper for us. I'm going to install this program here called Nitrogen. And give it just a second. And then once we have Nitrogen installed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type Nitrogen here in the terminal. And let's go ahead and launch it. I'm going to go into Preferences. I'm going to add a directory here. And the directory I want to add is probably in the root file system and slash user slash share slash backgrounds. Linux Mint. So we can actually do either one of those Linux Mint uh, directories there. I'll just select one of them and then hit OK and we should have all those Linux Mint wallpapers that were on our system previewed here inside Nitrogen. So let's go ahead and pick one. So I'll just pick this one here just to have something that's not a black screen. Now all right and that actually worked. I did notice it actually didn't size it correctly though. If I right click to get back to the terminal emulator and if I launch nitrogen again, I'm going to go back and instead of the automatic sizing, I'm going to do scaled and then hit apply. And now it stretches that wallpaper to actually take the entire 1680 by 1050 resolution of this VM. Now I'm going to close this terminal and I'm going to actually use some of the graphical applications on the system. Since I'm doing this video from the point of view of you guys are used to your traditional desktop environments and those graphical programs that come installed with them. I'm going to try not to do everything in the terminal and at the command line. And I'm going to try to avoid using tools like Vim or anything like that on this video. But if I right click on the desktop right now and go into applications, let me see if I can find the file manager. Actually, it's under utilities. There it is. It's called files. Let me launch that. And then what we want to do is if I go into the menu here and I choose view and I click on show hidden files because we need a hidden directory. We need a hidden directory in our home directory called dot config. Go into that directory and just for sake of having more stuff viewed on the screen at a time, I'm going to change the default look from icon view to list view so we actually get a list now we need a directory in this dot config folder called open box because that's where your open box config files need to reside on the system there is not an open box folder but if i go into the menu system here to file and then create new folder and then it's going to ask me what to name the folder here i'm going to type open box and now we have dot config slash open box go into the open box folder which will be empty and i'm going to right click and i'm going to create a new document a empty document and i am going to name it auto start now i'm going to right click on the auto start file that we just created and i'm going to choose open with text editor and that should launch this empty document in the text editor that was installed by default on Linux Mint Cinnamon. I think it's Zed. If I go to help and about, yeah, it's Zed, which is XED. It's an old fork of um, Gedit, which is GNOME's plain text editor. Really nice text editor, actually. Now, auto start, as the name implies, are all the programs that are going to start every time you log into OpenBox. So when you first log into your desktop, what needs to happen? Well, one of the first things that needs to happen is we need a panel. So tent to space ampersign. 
and then hit enter. And then what's the next thing we want? Well, we need a compositor for transparency and drop shadowing and nice effects. And it also helps prevent screen tearing. So our, our compositor on Linux Mint, of course, is going to be Compton space ampersand and then hit enter to go to the next line. And then we need to draw our wallpaper. And again, nitrogen was our wallpaper setter. So do nitrogen space dash dash restore is the command to restore the wallpaper that you had previously set using nitrogen. And then, of course, at the end, add the ampersand, hit enter. And one other thing I'm going to add because I had installed it earlier, and this is just so you guys can see how this auto start file works. Let's launch Rofi as soon as we um, launch OpenBox. So Rofi is going to pop up as soon as we log into OpenBox. And the command to get the Rofi run launcher is Rofi space dash show space run space. And then I'll do an ampersand at the end of that as well. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click save the current file. And then I'm going to right click on the desktop here and I'm going to choose exit. We're going to exit out of open box. It's going to ask, are you sure you want to exit? Yes, we do. And I'm going to type my password and log back in. And you see our wallpaper was drawn with nitrogen. We have the tint two panel, which is, has some slight transparency. And because the transparency is working, we know Compton is working. And then of course, Rofi also launched as well. So our auto start file did everything that we wanted it to do. Now I need to go back and fix the resolution here again. So I'm going to open the terminal. I'm going to up arrow on the keyboard until I get to that X render command I ran earlier. I'm going to hit enter. And the wallpaper is a little funny, so I'm going to type nitrogen here in the terminal. And to fix the wallpaper, I'm just going to pick another wallpaper here and hit apply uh, just to fix the, the weirdness <laughs> that was going on with that wallpaper. Now, one thing I don't like here is this applications menu. Um, that's nice that it has all everything installed on the system, but it is really tough to navigate this thing because... I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but it is actually not in alphabetical order. When I go to the systems category, it's not listed alphabetically. So it makes it really tough to find anything you're looking for. I guess if you don't know what you're looking for, it doesn't matter. But most of the time when you're looking through a menu system for an application, you know exactly what you're looking for. And typically you're going to look for it in alphabetical order. And because it's all jumbled up, that menu is kind of tough. But typically what you want to do when you run OpenBox is you want to install a third party program called Menu Maker, which automatically generates a menu system for you. So I'm going to launch Firefox, the browser, and there is a quick launcher for Firefox by default here at the, at the bottom of the screen in our Tent2 panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search for Linux Menu Maker. And let's see, there it is. What is Menu Maker? And it's hosted over on SourceForge. A Menu Maker, by the way, is a menu generation program for X11 window managers and for a lot of them. It will create a menu system for OpenBox, FluxBox, JWM, PECWM, Window Maker. I think it works with IceWM and a few others. To install Menu Maker, it's, it's not in your repository, the Debian repository or the Mint repository. So we're going to have to download the source code and then, then do a configure, make, and make install inside the terminal. So I will keep that up so you guys can read what that is. But I'm going to open this in a new window here and I'm going to choose to save the file and I'm going to click OK and it downloaded in seconds so it was already through with the download and then copy this these three commands here they're actually all in one command because it's saying hey run configure and and run make and and run make install and now you usually need to be a sudo have root privileges for the make install so, so this command actually may not work for me if I just try to do it as is in the terminal. Now let me open up our file manager again. So I'm going to right click and if I remember correctly, it's in under utilities and files. Let's go into our downloads directory and there is that tar gz file there. It's an archive. It's a compressed file of menu maker. I'm going to right click on it. Open with archive manager. Yes. And we're just going to extract here. Hit extract one more time and then close. And we just extracted that from the archive. 
Now what we need to do is in a terminal, we need to CD into the menu maker directory and then run that command configure make make install. So I'm going to close the file manager. We won't need that. Let's go ahead and open a terminal and then you zoom in here. What you want to do is CD into the downloads directory. So do CD space capital D O W hit tab and it will complete the path for you. And then the next thing you want to do is just hit tab again if the only thing in that directory is your menu maker. <laughs> and that's all that's in this is the menu maker directory that we extracted. So CD into that and then run dot slash configure. Well, I don't think I've ever seen this error before when I do a configure, make, make install. Uh, I did the configure and I got an error. Checking for GCC, for, for the C compiler, checking whether the C compiler works. No was the answer. <laughs> and it says error, C compiler cannot create executables. Surely the C compiler is on the system. I'm going to run this command here. So let's uh, just see. Okay, user bin CC. I'm going to run echo dollar symbol and then two capital C's. Uh, nothing was returned when I tried to echo that. You know what? I'm going to just assume there is an issue with GCC here. I'm going to just do a sudo apt install G++. And let's go ahead and give it my root password. All right, I'm going to... Clear the screen here and do an ls again. Remember, we are in the menu maker directory and I'm going to run dot slash configure. And now configure works. All right. I'm glad we figured that out. Now, after configure, you need to run make. And then after that, you need to do this with root privileges, sudo space make space install. And it looks like everything worked correctly. If everything worked correctly, then we should be able to run the menu maker command and generate our open box menu. Now let me go back to the browser here and the command to run is M maker, one word M maker, and then space the name of your window manager. So I'm going to CD back into the home directory clear the screen so that command is m maker space the name of your window manager in my case open box no terminal emulator specified we'll use the default i'm not sure if that's a, a legit error or just a warning but i have used menu maker enough in the past i think i can specify a terminal with a dash t flag so i could m maker space open box space dash t space x term because x term is like the standard default terminal emulator for x11 systems it says terminal emulator couldn't be found try another one because x term is not on the system so just to get this to actually work even though i don't plan on using x term well it's a fine terminal emulator i'll go ahead and install it just to make sure this menu maker command works correctly here and then i'm going to up arrow back to this command here m maker open box dash t x term and then well, now we also need to give it the dash f flag for force all right and now if i close all of this and if i right click on the desktop this is of course the previous menu you know nothing has changed what we need to do is in the main screen here reconfigure open box and then when I right click, look, now we have our new menu that was generated by the menu maker script. And it's actually nicely organized by category and everything is alphabetized. So it's, this is much easier to navigate. And of course, this can be done anytime, you know, if when you install new software or remove software from your system, you'll have to go back and rerun that M maker command to generate a new menu system for the, the new programs you installed. Now that we've got OpenBox set up, we have our menu, we have our wallpaper drawn, we have a taskbar. Um, the next thing you want to do is you need to get comfortable with how you configure OpenBox. So I'm going to right click on the desktop. I'm going to go into the utilities category. I'm going to go into files. This is our file manager. And again, go into the .config folder, OpenBox. And in the open box directory, we have our auto start. And there really should be three config files. Auto start for auto starting programs. The menu.xml file. This is your menu system. So what you see in this right click menu is actually just this big XML file. 
And the other thing you need is a rc.xml. The RC XML is your configuration as far as setting up key bindings and things like that. There's not one. Well, there's not one by default in your .config slash openbox directory, but there is one that you can go and get on the system and copy it over into here. So I'm going to go into utilities and where is the terminal? And maybe it's system. Where is still trying to figure out where everything is? Ah, there's a shells category terminal. All right. And let me zoom in again. So first we need to find where the default rc.xml is on the system. So run this command, sudo space find space slash for root. We're going to search the entire directory structure basically for dash i name. Oh, so insensitive case searching by name. And the name we're searching for is rc.xml. And then give it your root password. And there it is slash etsy slash xdg slash openbox slash rc dot xml i'm going to middle click on it to copy it and then go back to the front of this and i'm going to do a cp for copy and i'm going to copy this over to in my case slash home slash dt slash dot config slash openbox slash rc dot xml Copy that over. If I go back to the file manager, now we have an rc.xml. And this is where you could go and play with a lot of settings. This is where you can set the font as far as the font face, font size. You could set up your workspaces, how many workspaces you like to use. Maybe you want two workspaces or four workspaces or whatever. You can set all that. But really, what you want to go in here is uh, and play with are the key bindings. There are a lot of default key bindings, but maybe you want to change them. And this is the file that you would go in and play with that. Now, I won't sit here and hack on these config files on camera. That would be long and tedious, but I have my own config files already out there. So for me, it would be very easy to just go and grab my openbox config files from GitLab. If you guys want to check out my openbox config files, you can go grab them too. All you need to do is in the terminal type git space clone space https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash dwt1 slash and it's in my dot files repository so dot files dot git git is not installed on linux mint out of the box that's interesting so let's do a sudo apt install git and now that we've installed that let's go and run that git clone again to get my dot files from my gitlab Maybe it'll take a minute or two because I've got a lot of dot files. Actually, it downloaded those rather quickly. It just took a few seconds. Now, if I do an ls here in the terminal, you see there is a directory called dot files. That is what we just got from my GitLab. If I cd into that, well, actually, let's not cd into it. What I want to do is close the terminal because this is probably what some of you guys will do is let's just open up our graphical file manager. So I'm going to go to utilities, files. And look for the dot files directory. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to open it in a new window. So there is my dot files directory. And then in this window, I'm going to go into dot config open box. And then in my dot files dot config open box. And all of this, I'm going to control C to copy, go over here, control V to paste. And it's going to ask me, do I really want to replace all these files with those files? Yes, I do. And if that worked correctly, I could right click on the desktop. I could reconfigure. And there is my open box config file. Uh, as far as my settings and everything, this is my, my custom menu that I hand code. I actually don't use menu maker to make my menu system. I just do it all in XML. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and grab my... Uh, config files for Rofi and tent2. So I'm going to click on Rofi and then with the control key held down, I'm going to also click on tent2 and then control C to copy. And then over here, I'm going to do a control V to paste. And yeah, we'll just merge everything and replace everything. And now, once again, we'll just reconfigure. Actually, what I'm going to do, let's exit. And the virtual machine, the resolution got a little funny on me here, but let's log in 
I'm going to hit escape to get out of that Rofi menu. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. Actually, I'm going to click on a terminal. And my terminal emulator that I like to use with OpenBox apparently was Termite. And it says can't find Termite because it's not installed on the system. So I'm going to right click. And instead of the terminal, I'm going to click on Rofi. Let's launch Rofi. And I'm going to search for Terminal. Hit enter, and this of course is the system terminal here on Linux. Man, I'm going to run that xrender command one more time to, to fix this screen resolution here. And yeah, I don't like all of that, but really I don't like that wallpaper anyway. I'm going to launch Rofi one more time, which in my config I think I had it set to mod R, super R. Yeah, uh, so I can just hit super R and then type terminal. Zoom back in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run another git clone. I'm going to do git clone space https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash dwt slash wallpapers dot git. Let's get my wallpapers repository from my gitlab because I got better wallpapers than the mint guys. All right, so we got a, that wallpaper directory from my gitlab. So if I right click and go into my menu system here and I think I have nitrogen under a preferences category yep and now I'm gonna go into the preferences for nitrogen I'm gonna take that default Linux Mint directory and delete it I don't want nitrogen to use that directory for wallpapers anymore instead I'm gonna add a new directory for wallpapers and it's gonna be in my home directory and it's going to be wallpapers. And that is what we just get cloned, right? <laughs> My wallpapers. So there's about 300 wallpapers in that directory. So let's select those and hit OK. And now nitrogen is going to load 300 wallpapers. <laughs> yeah, these are all of my wallpapers and I'm just going to pick one that I think is appropriate because I'm doing a dark theme with the tent 2 panel. I'm probably going to do a dark open box theme and a dark uh, GTK theme as well. Let's pick a light wallpaper to go with our dark themes. So I'm going to choose that one right there. It's probably going to be really nice against a dark theme. Once I have a dark open box theme, I don't have one yet. So let me get back into the terminal. I have a open box theme on my GitLab as well. So I'm going to up arrow and I'm going to get clone gitlab.com slash dwt1 slash dt dash dark dash theme dot git. And now we've got my dark GTK theme and my dark open box theme. They're not going to be activated, though, until I open the LX Appearance tool. Remember, we installed a program called LX Appearance, and this is it. And somewhere in the GTK themes here, I should see DT-Dark Themes. No, it won't appear there because it's in my home directory, but that's not where it needs to be. So let me... Launch Rofi again, and I'm going to open Files. Isn't that the name of our file manager, the generic name? We have dt-dark theme here, but that needs to be in the root directory at slash user slash share slash themes. And we will put it in that directory if you're on a multi-user system so everybody has access to that theme. If you just want your user to have access to this theme, what you could do is copy it. And instead of going to slash user slash share slash themes, you could go into your home directory dot local share themes. And there's no themes directory. Let's create one. So if you create a themes directory in dot local slash share slash themes and then paste dt dash dark theme and then close and then let's open the lx appearance tool again and now dt dash dark theme is down here uh, let me go ahead and click on it hit apply and nothing happens when i do that it may be a permission problem i think i may have put it in the wrong directory it's not necessarily the wrong directory, but I think on Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based systems, instead of putting that thing in .local share themes, what I should do is put it in the home directory under .themes. So I'm going to create a folder in the home directory called .themes, and then in .themes, I'm going to paste dt-darktheme right click and go into LX appearance and <laughs> now it actually works that's weird it doesn't work in dot local share themes but it does work in the home directory slash dot themes all right and that is my 
DT dark theme. That's a GTK2 theme that I've been holding on to for years. Uh, it's really dark. Not everybody likes a really, really dark theme, but I like it. Now, I have an open box theme as well to go with the dark GTK theme because this is the GTK theme, which you see inside the window, but the border of the window, the top bar, and of course the right click menu, that is actually open box. That's part of the open box window manager. So we need to look for a program called obconf for obconfig. I think I have it in my menu system under administration, open box config right there. If I click enter, this is the obconf tool. And I need to go to appearance. Actually, I need to go to theme and then go down until you see DT dark theme. And then you see the t title bar is no longer blue. It's a dark color. And that's all I wanted to do. My right click menu, of course, is now dark as well. It's a very black with some green highlighting to match the tint two panel. And it's colored the exact same way. So, yes, I, I planned it that way. I do notice the fonts are a little weird <laughs> in LX appearance here. I don't know if it's a problem of maybe some fonts in my config that I have set that aren't installed on the system out of the box, but uh, I, that's all I'm going to play with today. But th this is a little bit of what you can do with OpenBox. OpenBox is a really cool program, a uh, window manager. It's really attractive and it's really light. It's really fast. It's great on memory as far as RAM usage. I mean, it loads up in like 200 megs of RAM or less, you know, depending on how stripped down you want to get with OpenBox. So those of you that are looking for a good alternative from things like GNOME and Cinnamon, again, those big, heavy desktop environments, if you want to go something lighter, something far more customizable as well, we didn't really customize it to its full extent on this video. This was more of an introductory kind of video for setting up OpenBox, but... OpenBox is extremely customizable. You can set key bindings to do anything you want to do with your windows. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show, Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch, 5530, Akami, Channel, Chuck, Claudio, Dylan, George, Kelly, Devils, Lewis, Paul, Robert, Scott, somebody else, Willie. I, I threw some extra names in there, and I probably forgot some names in there that time. But yeah, I want to thank all these guys, all these names you're seeing on the screen. They're the producers of the show. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.